Hi, it's Faras Rahal again here at OIS at ASRS in Chicago. It's been a great meeting so far. We're nearing the end, and I'm here with Daniela Ferrara, who's representing Genentech. She's a retina doctor as well, like me, so we might be able to have some interesting clinical dialogue, although that's not I necessarily so. the intent. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit, maybe even what your role is with the company initially, if you can, uh, since you're a clinician, and then about the uh, program uh, that you'd like to tell us about. The, I'm going to read it exactly. The healthcare, personalized healthcare program. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. So at Genentech Roche, I'm a senior medical director. Um, as you said, I'm a retina specialist, and I've been a clinician scientist for a few decades now. And uh, I transfer my academic role to to Genentech Roche now. So we do uh, product development, and I belong to the clinical science group. So in a nutshell, I design clinical trials, I conduct, and I interpret data at the end. Um, but you're still practicing in your own clinic? Uh, I, or still, no? I still uh, belong to Tufts University, okay. so I see research patients, and I have my online of research at Tufts, okay. yes, with uh, Jay Duker, Nadia Wahid, Caroline Baumau, Elias Richel, great group. Excellent people. Yes. So tell us about the personalized uh, health program. Yeah, so Genentech Roche realizes we need to move the needle for patients, and uh, we're using meaningful data at scale and advanced analytics with a very audacious goal to prevent vision loss. So the idea is to use artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning technologies to better interpret what patients need in a way that we can promote personalized health care. And by that I mean we want to minimize treatment burden at one hand, but also at the other hand make sure that patients that can really benefit and can benefit the most get treatment early enough. So in other words, we see that artificial intelligence is going to be a powerful tool in the hands of knowledgeable clinicians, and we hope artificial intelligence can help clinicians to improve their clinical judgment. Is this artificial intelligence program being developed at Genentech itself? Are they licensing this from somebody? Are they partnering with one of the big tech companies? Well, we are building our internal capabilities and we're building a strong uh, analytics group. So it's an in-house uh, force that's going to make the foundation for the whole personalized healthcare program. But that being said, this is a huge undertaking. We can't do this alone. So we are partnering already with uh, external groups and we have two main workforces. At one hand, we want to collect more data. So all our efforts so far are being based in our legacy data. We have millions of clinical trial quality images, but that's not enough for artificial intelligence. So we started our exercises with the legacy data, and now we are partnering to get larger data sets, perspective data sets, real world data sets. This data you're referring to, it's mostly imaging? It's mostly imaging, and our models, they can encompass clinical data, potentially genetic data, and, and, and other types of information. But ophthalmology is such a fortunate field for artificial intelligence because we rely our decisions in imaging. So it's mostly imaging. 100%, and I, I agree that because we have all this advanced imaging and we can make a fairly considerable portion of our decisions off of the imaging, it will be great utility in ophthalmology. But there's one question I have since you understand this space. I spoke with someone earlier who is involved in a program that they might develop something along these lines uh, surgically in that the surgical vitrectomy machine or cataract machine will provide data that's uh, in real time that could mm -hmm. be tabulated and so forth. That seems fairly easy, but when we go to the clinic, uh, outside of the imaging, and there's a lot of good important information in the clinic that you'll need for personalized health, I suspect. Right now, ophthalmology is still not there, or maybe anyone is there, where uh, the technician's handwritten note, uh, or even the electronic medical record, it's not really high quality data. How do you, how do you plan to get around that when you get to that point? Yeah, we learned that in the hard way. And you would be amazed to know that even clinical 
trial quality of data still lacks some of the basic needs for artificial intelligence. Yeah. So um, we, we learned by doing it that data curation in, in or just organizing the data is a huge undertaking. But that's fine, we, we learn and, and now we have smarter ways to, to get good data quality in a format that makes sense for artificial intelligence exercises. So and you are trying. We are trying. Together, IOPs, uh, visual acuities, uh, slit lamp findings, yes. things that would go along with imaging that help us in making our decisions. Yes. Yeah, that's a challenge. Absolutely. Do you mind me asking how you're doing it? Can you answer it It's easily? twofold. Well, high level, yeah, so it's twofold. So for prospective clinical trials, clinical trials we're starting now, that's the easiest. Yeah, those because are the cleanest, setting, of course. Those are the cleanest and we know what we need now. Yeah. And we're setting the trials and our, our systems in a way that we're capturing the data in a, in a format that's suitable for artificial intelligence. The true challenge at this point for us is the retrospective data. Yeah, because everything in our clinics. Everything in our clinics, and, millions and millions we of did not start working with real world data yet, yeah. but we are getting ready for it, and now we know that curation is going to be a huge part of this this whole effort. Right. So, but we need are, to we need to get that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be a challenge, but I think I agree. We need to get it if if we're going to really apply artificial intelligence to our decision making. Yes, the OCT is maybe 80% of the battle, I don't know, some number. But there's other data points that you see in your patient or your technician gets information that factors into our decision making. So if you're really going to objectify it, we'll need to find a way to curate it to use I your work. I want to say though that even the most basic fundus imaging that we thought it would be straightforward is not the case. Mm. So curation, even for OCT, for, for resting and geography, it was a huge challenge. Because, because of the variability? Because it's very basic, but the way we currently, or in our practices we store uh, for resting and geography, all you need is the patient number, patient name, ID, initials, and that's enough for the clinical use. Sure. But for artificial intelligence, we have to create and organize uh, uh, fundus, uh, the, the uh, field you're collecting, DI, the timing. So there are so many variations that would impact the performance of an algorithm that we're pretty much needing to go back Sounds and almost manually. Impossible. It's Can it be just done? absolutely, yeah. absolutely, okay. absolutely. Manually. We're, we're, Oh, we are. We are, we have partners that are helping us to do this uh, automatically to the extent yes. it's possible. Yeah. But some some of the work eventually huh. needs to be done manually for by people that understand. Yeah, how to yeah, do that's it. It, that's an impressive task. Any other companies that you're aware of are trying this exact uh, method? Uh, you mean to curate to, images? To curate these kind of not just images. I know a lot of people there, but to curate clinical data in its entirety or in some larger form? I would say anyone that is coming to AI is facing the same problem. Yeah. And we have the same challenges, but thankfully we have the same or similar solutions. All these smart and tech people are going to be <laughs> shocked how bad our clinical documentation has been for decades. And they're going to say, say, this is how you've been deciding so it, how to treat people? It was, <laughs> it was very good to the purpose that was designed for. 100%. So for clinical use, it was perfect for 100%. clinical trial interpretation, it was perfect, yeah. but for artificial intelligence, it's just a different demand. Very good, I understand. Data. With regard to this meeting, I don't know if you've come before. Yes. Um, how do you view the meeting for you personally as a professional and for your company? Has it been helpful? What things do you like about it? What things have helped you? Personally, and again, as a clinician scientist, I love to come to OAS. I think it's a great chance to see what's what's going to be hot in many years from now. So I think it's the way to see um, people that think alike and innovation and, and what's going to come. All in one come. place. Yeah, absolutely. And, and see nice colleagues every time. So I really like to come. I agree. I agree. Thank you for coming and giving us the interview. Continued it's a pleasure. success. Thank you I've, so much. Thank you for having us. It's a great challenge, us. but it's a good idea. Yes, we need Thank to you do for that. Doing it. Yes, absolutely. 100%. We need to do that. Ooh.